you see it. Hello, this is Julia Whittup with Talk Story Media. And we have with us today, Angela Adkins Atkinson. Yes. And Angela is a gifted clairvoyant, dream worker, remote viewer. Ooh, that's interesting. And teacher of intuitive arts. She works with clients and students to develop their intuitive gifts through dreams, psychic readings, shamanic journeying, and remote viewing. This sounds very good. And Angela is going to have a booth at Traveling Shaman's Camp. So tell us about your booth and what you're planning to do at the camp. Yeah, well, thank you so much, Julia, for having me today. I'm really excited. This will be my first traveling camp that I have attended, much less than a vendor at. So I'm really excited okay. to be there. Yeah. And, you know, I have a long history with um, shamanism and have studied it uh, for a number of years and, um, and also studied different kinds of intuitive modalities. In addition mm -hmm. to, I, I feel like journeying and shamanism is just a unique cultural portal into accessing our subconscious, same way dreams, which you do dream work as well. Um, and so that's really my passion in life is to both provide direct services. So doing psychic readings and dream work and remote viewing and, um, and journeying. But um, my real passion is teaching because I feel like, um, I mean, I know that everyone has the capability and psychic reservoirs of wisdom and knowledge. They just don't believe it, uh, need a little bit of training um, and need some support. So at the traveling camp, I will have a booth. Um, so I will be offering to do readings for folks. Um, we can work a dream. I have a um, kind of a unique blend of how I work dreams with folks. Okay. And if people are interested in learning how to remote view, I might actually run a little workshop because I do that at other holistic fairs, um, teaching people that they can learn to remote view in 30 minutes, which is kind of an wow, amazing. Wow, that example. would be, I would take that workshop for sure. <laughs> Okay, wow, how exciting. And um, um, yeah, so we'll have to talk about that after we get through with this interview about getting you on the docket or the lineup. So tell me about the little bit about the remote viewing. I'm really interested in that. Yeah, most people don't have never heard of it, and I hadn't heard of it. Um, it a few years ago, I was exposed to it and um, sought training in mm -hmm. it and was initially quite turned off by the concept. It was used by the military for doing psychic spying. <laughs> it's really how it got its name in the 80s. And um, was you, that kind of put me off a little bit, but remote viewing is simply using um, a series of psychic protocols. It's actually very disciplined. They call it the mental martial art. Um, that you go through a series of protocols where you're accessing your psychic information to be able to identify objects or people or events um, that are completely hidden from ordinary perception. So a remote viewer might be tasked with finding a missing person. That's often how it's used but also like finding um, archeological sites or sunken ships or things like that. So through these series of protocols, you're able to gradually um, reduce the noise, the mental chatter in uh -huh. order to be able to access the psychic intuition um, and knowledge. And it's very, very specific. And you're either right or you're wrong. So it can be quite a humbling experience to go through remote viewing training. But that's why I teach my students. And they learn very quickly. And it's their minds are blown when they're able to specifically identify um, the Eiffel Tower, for example, without knowing anything about, like, it's, a, it's an image in an envelope. They don't know anything about 
you know, about what's this. in there, what's in there. Uh -huh. And they're like, I can do this. I was like, yes, you can. Anyone can learn to remote view. So it's an, again, just another access point into our psychic wisdom with very specific practical applications. Huh. Could you use it to find your phone or your keys? <laughs> I used it to find my keys. Oh. And, uh, one of my students actually, just with a little bit of training, lost her wedding ring and was able to use some of the protocols plus just some intuitive um, work that we had done together. She found her wedding ring in a place that she would have never, ever looked. And wow. these are folks who, you know, who have little exposure and training. And that just shows how innate and close to the surface it is for all of us. It really is. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Wow. That sounds fun. We'll have to, I'll have to make sure that I put you on the schedule at a time where I can go. <laughs> Yeah, so I am excited about the camp. I'm um, really, I love shamanic, the shamanic community. Um, I love the nature-based, earth-centered approach, you know. Um, and so I'm very excited to just be in that beautiful world of wisdom and just beauty and the connection, the web of life connection that is embedded in the, in the shamanic tradition. So I'm very excited about coming in August. So thank you for the invitation. Yeah, and for all of you who are listening, Traveling Shamans Camp is August 26th through 28th at the fairgrounds in Hotchkiss. Um, fairgrounds is kind of big for this small of a, of a event, but we might get a lot bigger in the future, so we'll see keep it there we've got lots of parking lots of camping it's a good place to have it and lots of restaurants nearby and maybe we'll have some, some food trucks and stuff so do you have any questions about the camp um so as this is my first time um i'm i would just be curious about um what kind of people are attracted and show up and who might be interested in in this kind of um sort of combination of offerings like tell me about the people that show up and who's in this community well a lot of people show up for the sweat lodges because everybody is interested in doing a sweat lodge we have one each morning and one each night and then we have some other ceremonies too but we kind of encourage people to only do one ceremony a day because we found out in the past that <laughs> people got overwhelmed because they're very everything that we do is quite intense these yes. are all very intense and if you do too much of it it you can't handle it you can't integrate that fast so what I've done this year is I'm getting a lot of body workers together to um, offer massages and sound baths and things where you can kind of integrate things that works with your body so that you can integrate the ceremonies that you are going to. Yeah, that's beautiful. It's so important to just kind of let it sink in and let, you know, let the ceremony do its work. And, yeah. um, and will you be teaching folks about ceremony? Like if someone showed up who had never even, have, you know, had knows very little about shamanic work, um, a beginner would, how would a beginner be walked through what's available and open to them? We do have someone who will be giving a class in that each morning. And we have a video of her talking about ceremony and what you should uh, be aware of and that kind of thing and also the another thing we're planning to have are some um, panel discussions and one of those will be um, uh, mind control and how to free your mind mm -hmm. and another one will be um, cultural appropriation how to know what it is and how to avoid it 
Yes, I, I love that you're including that and honoring the root tradition and how to be respectful of, yeah. of that because I think there's a lot of misunderstanding about that out in the mainstream world. And so um, that's wonderful that you're offering that. Yeah, our, yeah. Our main, one of our main things is to preserve the shamanic culture, both the traditional and what's new like remote viewing because so much has been lost over the years. So we'll see, hopefully we can preserve it by writing about it, making these recordings, doing these, you know, a lot of it's energy and oral transmission. So that's why we had the camp. Yeah. That allows us to transmit it orally and energetically because words don't sometimes just aren't enough. <laughs> no, and it goes into the left brain, right? And then it gets translated with, and so much of my work too is ex, it's experiential and it's about calming the chatter and the left brain so that the actual purity of the message and purity of the energy can seep in. And it's felt in the body in a different place. Not that our analytical brain isn't important for, you know, how do we make this a contemporary tool, you know, but, but the real access point is at the spirit level and that to deprogram our Western minds. Yes. Yes. <laughs> really That's challenging, a part but, of what we yeah. But it's like a cutting a new groove. And um, yeah, and if folks are interested in my background and um, my work and my approach to the intuitive arts, is, um, I have a website. It's theintuitivelife.net. And um, I'm available for any kind of questions. We're on Instagram. Um, would love to hear from folks and really look forward to seeing everybody at the camp. Okay, I'm looking forward to seeing you. Thanks for being with me today, and we'll see you in August. Great. Thank you, Julia. Okay. Bye. Bye.